Hello YouTube and welcome back to Let's Play Bloom's Tower Defense 5 Deluxe Edition. In this episode we continue again with our uh, medium reverse series thing. Alright, so what level shall we play today? Or shall I, because I'm the one playing it. And, oh look, it's Archipelago, which I, th I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, this is actually, I think, the first track that I had to use a continue on uh, when I was doing it uh, normally. So this should be interesting. Uh, this track, in case you're not familiar, uh, has a whole bunch of water all over the place, as you can see. Um, <laughs> see what I did there? Anyways, uh, so you can use the Buccaneer a lot, because there's plenty of room to use the Buccaneer here. And there's also like this shipwrecked Buccaneer, which is kind of interesting, but it doesn't, as far as I know, it doesn't do anything. Um, and there's not much room uh, on land for uh, other towers. So it really is suggested, pretty strongly, that you use a Buccaneer. And with the Dreadnought upgrade, the Deluxe upgrade, uh, it does allow you to pop every balloon type, because now you can pop lead with your basic shots. So uh, I'm not sure if that's the right term for that, but um, uh, so that way, I'm not sure if this is going to leak some. I think it is. Yeah. Um, but anyways, that way... You've already got lead busting with your normal attacks, and then I should really do something else because this obviously isn't working out very well. But um, you can also get camo detection with the crow's nest uh, upgrade. Oh, I didn't need the uh, road spike there. But anyways, uh, the grape shot is also pretty helpful for uh, getting multiple blooms. But uh, I'm not sure exactly how helpful it is. Uh, but anyways, then the crow's nest for 250 that gives you camo detection. And then the uh, Dreadnought gives you lead busting, so you don't need to worry about that. The only real thing you have to worry about, I guess, is Moabs. Although if you were just to build a whole bunch of monkey pirates, or pirate monkeys, um, then that would be a pretty good defense against the Moabs, but you would need quite a few to actually uh, get rid of all of them. Especially because around 64, I think, it's like 6 or 8 Moabs. So you need at least 6 or 8 monkey pirates. Uh, to really get rid of those, um, like, efficiently, I guess you could say. Uh, or you could just stick with a whole bunch of destroyers, because I think that's a little bit cheaper, and uh, it helps out just with all the other balloons as well. Uh, just a really fast attack rate. Kind of like, uh, I think I've said it before, kind of like having a super monkey with laser vision, pretty much, um, and camo detection. Plus here you can place a whole bunch more. And they're also, I think, much cheaper than a uh, Super Monkey with Plasma Vision. Alright, so... I'm not sure if I should save up for a Destroyer, or if I should just go with another Monkey Buccaneer uh, right now. Because I don't know exactly how well uh, this one Buccaneer in this one position uh, will help out, I guess. Or how long it'll last. And I don't want to use only Buccaneers. I want to try uh, using some other towers. Maybe some ninjas, or some boomerang throwers. But, yeah. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet. Again, I always think during the match, oh yeah, I should plan out what I'm going to do for the next one, or practice or something. And then I never do. But, uh, so yeah. And I'm recording this on Monday, because I'm going to be trying out this new kind of uploading schedule type thing, where I'll record all the episodes I need and edit them uh, one day in advance, and then just as soon as it turns to midnight and then becomes the next day, I'm just going to start uploading them all uh, right at midnight for me. Uh, that way I can sleep through most of the actual upload time, uh, since I have so many videos that I need to upload. And uh, because I'm just using one laptop, uh, the process of uploading it and editing it and playing the games, uh, it'd be nice if I could overlap that by having another like computer or something to do that with, but um, obviously it does take up a lot of time, so cutting out a lot of the upload time by just sleeping through it <laughs> uh, does help. Uh, so yeah, just updating you on my upload YouTuber life and all that. In case any of you are wondering about being YouTubers, or uh, Let's Players, I guess you could say, 
you do have to take into consideration that it's n it takes a lot more time uh, to actually put up the videos than it does just to play the videos. It's kind of like um, most works of art, I guess. I'm not necessarily trying to say that uh, this is a work of art, but just uh, works of art in general and in general creating things take a lot more time to make than they do to enjoy. Like, for a simple, simple analogy, if you were to make a sandwich, let's just say it takes you 10 minutes, just hypothetically, to make the sandwich. It'll probably take you 5 minutes or less to eat the sandwich. This is a very simple, uh, basic analogy where it's just, it takes a lot, to, a lot of time to make something really good, and then it doesn't take that much time to actually just go through it, or use it, or let its purpose be done. Unless you're thinking about like a tool, like a hammer, or a saw, or something. I have no idea how long it takes to make one, <laughs> but you're probably going to be using it for a long time. And I have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> or whether or not that actually makes sense, or is accurate in any way. But uh, with these three buccaneers that I've uh, built, I guess, or bought, or placed, or however you'd say that, uh, should be good for a while should be good enough uh, for me to save up enough money for a buccaneer. I mean, not a buccaneer, uh, a destroyer. So that should be good. And uh, another good thing about having multiple buccaneers is, although it is more expensive than just getting, like if the destroyer hypothetically was five times as fast for the attack rate, even though it's more expensive to build five buccaneers, uh, instead of going to the destroyer. Uh, it does increase your grape shot uh, attack speed by five, or by five times, I guess, because when you get the destroyer, only the main uh, fireball cannonball is increased attack speed. The grape shot is still the same attack speed. So if you were to have five buccaneers, then the grape shot would also be increased by five times uh, due to the way that works. And then also they could all target different things rather than all constantly be firing at the same thing like the destroyer. So those are a few um, different, uh, what would you say, a few different pros, I guess, or uh, advantages to building five or just multiple buccaneers rather than upgrading one to a single destroyer. But obviously the advantage of the destroyer is it's quite a bit cheaper. So uh, even though you may not, might not have enough money uh, to just build your first one into a destroyer, uh, if you do build one or two extra like I did, then you should have enough for the destroyer. And again, I'm using the deluxe upgrade uh, Dreadnought to let it pump uh, leads. So if you don't have that, then you will need some other form of uh, some other tower to help with the leads. You can either go with the cannon ship, uh, which is pretty good against leads, but uh, it's basically like adding a bomb tower on top of your buccaneer, pretty much. Uh, I don't know as far as the stats go for that, but um, that's pretty much how I view it, even though I don't use it very often. But uh, two destroyers are pretty powerful. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how well they will do against ceramic, but as you can see against that big clump of uh, pinks, I uh, got through it pretty quickly. I actually don't know how much uh, pierce the cannonball has. I'm assuming maybe five, but I don't know. I haven't actually tested that. That's interesting. And another good thing about the destroyer is that uh, if you give the crow's nest, then it has the camo detection, so you don't have to worry about uh, all the camo balloons. It's just all the same. And because they have such good attack rate, if you have uh, multiple across the screen. You don't really have to worry about regrow balloons because um, they're not usually left alone for very long. So that's good. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Um, I was thinking of uh, uh, putting a monkey village here. Yeah, that'll work. Um, to give them increased range and increased attack speed with the jungle drums. Um, again, because I have the bigger beacons, um, whatchamacallit, 
uh, <laughs> bigger beacons deluxe upgrade. Uh, so there's that. Uh, Monkey Fort increases your uh, piercing power or popping power by one, which is pretty helpful when you have such a fast attack rate, because then uh, each of those shots gets an equal or gets an additional one popping power, which is pretty useful. Uh, not really sure how it affects snipers. I don't think it gives them an extra layer popping power, and they never really pop more than one balloon at a time, so I don't know exactly how that works. Um, although, I am getting radar scanner because I'm going to try to get a super monkey. And super monkeys don't have camo detection unless you have their specialty building, and obviously I don't have their specialty building, so I'm going to use it, um, I'm going to use the radar scanner for that, because while these uh, destroyers are pretty awesome, uh, they're not really the best, and they might be as good as a laser vision super monkey, or a laser blast super monkey, they're not as good as, say, a robo monkey, or a technological terror. So, for this episode, I would like to have that super monkey as kind of a little bit of a uh, safety net. Because, like I said, destroyers are pretty good, but uh, they did struggle a little bit with that ceramic. So, again, I could just build a few more, but uh, first I'd like to get a super monkey uh, to help out with that. Also, in case you're not aware, although I'm pretty sure it'd be pretty hard for you to not be aware of this by now, but I'm going to be posting videos for, like, seven different games, so uh, that's going to be a little bit difficult. Eden Eternal, uh, in general, uh, that's going to be a little bit... Uh, kind of on the back burner, I guess. I'm not going to be doing quite as many videos of that. Uh, partly because I don't see as much of a demand for it, I guess. Like, if more people actually comment and tell me that they want me to do it, then... Uh, yeah, I will start trying to do that a little bit more often, but... Uh, as of right now, because I have so many other games, I'm probably not going to be posting as many videos of that. Um, but again, if more people do want me to do it, then I will put more effort into getting those videos out. Alright. So, uh, back onto balloons. Um, as far as the viewer challenges uh, that people were giving me... Also, <laughs> quick note. Uh, someone had challenged me to use all the dartling guns. Or, only dartling guns, not only dart monkeys. <laughs> so that uh, dart monkey storm episode, that was... That was kind of for free, I guess. <laughs> kind of an accident. I didn't realize that they meant dartling guns instead of dart monkeys uh, until after I made the video and everything. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but I will be doing that dartling gun one because uh, I don't think it was the same person, but uh, someone else uh, suggested that I do only dartlings on the rink stage. So I'll try that. But uh, also a question for that person in particular and for anyone else watching. Uh, that cares about it. Um, would you want me to put that in place of a normal episode? Or would you want me to put that uh, like as its own series? Because I kind of included those challenges just to have an extra video or two so that the episode number would line up with the day of the week pretty much, which is again kind of a lame reason to do that, but um, eh, it's something I did. So uh, yeah. Um, I don't want to get the numbers off the, <laughs> like, out of sync with the, uh, days of the week, so it'd be nice either to add that as, like, its own challenge, set its own playlist episode type of thing, or just to replace, uh, an episode, like, maybe every Wednesday or something. So that's just a topic for discussion for all of you. Uh, yeah. Alright. So, uh, with Plasma Blast, this Super Monkey is pretty good, and especially now that I just got uh, Robo Monkey, and actually I think that increased its range a little bit. I don't remember, uh, I don't remember that increasing its range, but oh well. Uh, it's nice and helpful and all that. And, uh, yeah, the Destroyers are, they are pretty good. Um, like I said, the Robo Monkey is more now just of a safety net and to help with Moabs, rather than uh, my main attacking force. No, it already has 5,300... Okay, yeah. This one has 16,000 uh, pop count. And also, I'm pretty sure it's over by now, by the time you're watching. Um, 
but there was this uh, Mighty Number no. 9, in case you haven't heard of it. A game based on, not based on Mega Man, but uh, made by the same people, pretty much. Most of the same people uh, as Mega Man. There's this really cool game that uh, had its Kickstarter that was going on for a month and just now ended a little while ago. Um, like, less than 24 hours, I think. Um, but I just thought it was really cool that that game got, uh, at least at the time that I'm recording this, about 3 million, or 3.1, maybe 3.2 million dollars in 30 days, pretty much. Like, that's, that's pretty crazy. Uh, as far as I know, that, uh, I don't have much experience with Kickstarter, but as far as I know, I'm assuming that's like breaking a record or something. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, it'd be cool to know if any of you were part of that, either if you knew about the game or if you donated or something. Uh, I know. Well, yeah, I donated. Uh, I don't know if it's like proper etiquette to tell how much I donated or something. Um, but yeah, so that was that. And now back on the balloons. Uh, kind of want a monkey town just to increase the money, but I'm already at round 57. Uh, might as well just wait for a technological terror. No point in getting the uh, Monkey Intelligence Bureau unless I wanted to get the Call to Arms. But I really don't need the Call to Arms. I can just wait. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Pretty boring. <laughs> Once you get to this point where it's like, yeah, I've got these four super monkeys pretty much that are just totally destroying everything. And actually, now that I think about it, I might have some trouble with the BFB because eh, the Moabs aren't going down that fast. Eh, I'm sure I'll be fine. And round 59, which I just realized, is the first round with Camo Lead. And for any of you that uh, play Bloom's Tower Defense Battles, which I just realized I should probably try putting in a couple of episodes of that. Um, I haven't played it in a while, but uh, for any of you that play that game, Camo Lead is a very strong weapon against new players that don't really realize how easy it is to get destroyed by camo lead just because not very many towers uh or i kind of mentioned this in a, another video a long time ago actually uh well not really a long time ago it's only like two months just really crazy to think about but anyways uh camo lead is a very difficult tower or a difficult difficult balloon type to uh, defeat just because a lot of balloons or a lot of <laughs> keeping my words mixed up a lot of towers or monkeys uh can't really pop camo lead uh, Dartling Gun is a good one for it. Spike Factory, Wizards, uh, some Ninja Monkeys, and then I guess um, Destroyers or uh, uh, Buccaneers with the, what's it called, uh, Cannon Ship uh, upgrade. So yeah, there's a couple more, but those are just something that you gotta watch out for uh, in that game. Which actually now I'm thinking about Dart Monkeys using the Juggernaut, and then having other, like, ninja monkeys or something pop the rest of the camo. But anyways, uh, <laughs> just something to keep in mind if you're ever going to play that game. Um, just remember that uh, camo lead are very tough. And this ceramic layer, or ceramic clump, is also going to be very tough. And wow, that is crazy how many got through. Alright, so... Uh, let's see. That's a lot. Uh, that should help a little bit with the uh, Glaive Lord. That should help with the clumps. So that was nice. Uh, being able to just <laughs> throw that in right there at the end. But, um... Alright, so I'm totally distracted right now because of this. But, alright. I only needed it for that. And now I'm going to get the Technological Terror. So now it's just going to destroy everything, <laughs> uh, especially with its Bloom Annihilation ability, which I'll probably use on uh, the next round uh, if it gets to that point. It does 1000 damage to mob class balloons. So actually, I think that pops a BFB, because uh, a, BF a BFB is 4 Moabs, and each Moab is 200, so that's... 800, I think, like, uh, I think that's how it works, and I'm not sure if that means it'll, I don't know how, I'm sure I've tested this before, but now I don't remember exactly how well 
the balloon annihilation ability does against uh, BFBs. Now I want to test that, but they'll probably get destroyed before they get within range. Yeah, I'll sell one just to help them along, but yeah, they're not going to make it. But, uh, all right. That's awesome. <laughs> just the annihilation. Uh, destroying those last few. All right, so anyways. Uh, that's going to be it, pretty much. Uh, still just looking at my money. Still going to take a long time to get to 6,000. Uh, but that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.